Hi, Gary Stearman with another update from Prophecy in the News. I'm making this on Wednesday, June 6th for release on Thursday, June the 7th. And it has to do with what I consider to be a very important story out of the Middle East concerning Russia thrusting itself right into the middle of the current Syrian problem. The United States President Barack Obama, though widely expected to pursue direct action against Syrian ruler Bashar al-Assad following the Hula atrocity, is preoccupied with what he regards as a greater threat to the world. Now get this, the greater threat, in fact, is a greater threat uh, because it would be a potential grab for the huge, and I do mean huge, Syrian stock of chemical and biological weapons by Al-Qaeda or other terrorist organizations, maybe Hezbollah, uh, perhaps the Chechen uh, communists who live in southern Russia. But uh, this is being widely reported, and the problem is that should Syria's government fall, that is if uh, Bashar al-Assad should be overthrown. His army then would be basically leaderless. This army is in possession of perhaps the largest chemical and biological warfare stash in the Middle East. And, and of course, it, the, uh, the program was begun uh, 30 years ago by the father of Bashar al-Assad, Hafez al-Assad, who actually used chemical and biological warfare uh, agents on the Kurds in northern Syria, uh, killing, it is estimated, around 30,000 of them. And uh, you may remember that atrocity because it, it, it covered the news at that time. Well, since the time of Hafez al-Assad, Syria has continued to expand its chemical and biological warfare program. And the second paragraph of this story is all important. And I quote, the U.S. president is trying to persuade Russian President Vladimir Putin to accept his new plan for the immediate assignment by UN, the U.N. Security Council of 3,000 armed monitors to Syria to take charge of the six chemical and biological stores there. Another 2,000 would later join that team. To allay Putin's suspicions of a trick to insert Western armed forces into Syria against Moscow's will, Obama suggested, and get this now, he suggested that most of the monitors would be Russian or nationals of governments lining up with its support of the Assad regime. In other words, talk about uh, hiring the fox to guard the chicken coop. This would put the Russians uh, directly over those chemical and biological warfare stores. And there is a commentary, and by the way, I'm quoting Barack Obama himself, quote, if only one barrel of anthrax reaches the hands of, the, uh, of a Caucasian terrorist group. Now, the Caucasian terrorists are the Chechens up in the Caucasus, north of Syria. If only one barrel of anthrax reaches the hands of a Caucasian terrorist group, Russia will face its greatest terrorist threat in history. Millions of Russians may perish. It was clear from this comment that Assad's weapons of mass destruction are not stored as warheads, bombs, or shells, but rather are kept in barrels or kegs, some kind of sealed containers in six underground bunkers. Uh, and by the way, these agents uh, consist of GB, sarin gas, uh, GA, taboon, and VX, nerve gases, as well as four different kinds of mustard gas and anthrax. By the way, a specially chemically designed anthrax or uh, a, uh, a uh, genetically modified anthrax that would not yield itself to antibiotics. And so we've got here the makings of a world-class uh, terrorist action. So this is a story that I find most amazing. Russia is coming back in the Middle East. A second story from Arutsheva, dateline yesterday, June uh, the 6th. And I'm quoting here, Russia which is helping Iran develop nuclear power, has more nuclear warheads than any country 
in the world, according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. That report was issued last Monday, and it says that Russia has the world's largest nuclear arsenal of 10,000 warheads. Worldwide, there are an estimated 19,000 nuclear warheads held by eight countries. 19,000 nuclear warheads in the world. Wow. Just think about that number for a moment. The list of countries includes Israel, uh, which the Institute estimates has 80 nuclear warheads. Israel officially has a policy of nuclear ambiguity, but is assumed by most everyone to have manufactured nuclear warheads. Previous estimates have been around 200. Nobody knows uh, at all. The United States has the second largest nuclear arsenal with about 8,000 uh, nuclear warheads. Both superpowers possess more than 90% of the nuclear weapons of the world. France is estimated to possess about 300, followed by China with 240, Britain with 225, India and Pakistan with about 100 each. The United States and Russia each have reduced their number of warheads by 6 and 10 percent, respectively. That doesn't give me much comfort, but now we have, by way of review, uh, the two largest uh, weapons holders in the world, Russia and the United States, uh, dancing around a, a very volatile situation involving the fall of Bashar al-Assad's government in Syria. Should it fall, it would release uh, perhaps the Middle East's largest chemical and biological uh, weapons storehouse to the hands of the likes of Al-Qaeda or the Chechen force or Hezbollah or who knows who else might get hold of it and where it would go uh, if released from those bunkers in unknown places in Syria. That's the kind of world we're living in today. I would remind you that the Bible says that Russia would become a power in the Middle East in the latter days. Certainly, that's indicated by the stories we just read. In the upcoming battle, Ezekiel 39.6, where the Lord says concerning Magog, that is, uh, the land of uh, Meshach and Tubal, the land of Russia, uh, we have in Ezekiel 39, 6, and I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, those would be the continents of the world, making this a global event, and they shall know that I am the Lord, so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name any more, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And so, uh, as we approach the day of the Lord, we have to remember uh, this, uh, this little verse 6 in Ezekiel 39. And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. And many people have said over the years that that fire could well be nuclear in nature, and it, based upon the, uh, the description here in Ezekiel 39, it is certainly a global fire. Everything is in place. There are 19,000, uh, give or take a few, nuclear warheads in the world today. And once the first one gets released, who knows what would happen after that. Fortunately, we are believers in Scripture, and the Lord is going to save his people. So uh, I believe that with all my heart, just as I believe that we're living in very precipitous times. So keep looking up. <laughs>